Hey guys, thought it was about time for another Mopar news episode, where we update you on what's going on in the world of Mopar. Today I've got a bunch of things on tap, including how FCA has been affected by COVID-19, the Ram Rebel TRX, Durango Hellcat, 300 SRT Pacer, and more. So let's get right into it. The first thing I wanted to look at today was how FCA became affected financially from the COVID-19 pandemic. They have reported their first quarter results, which show a net loss from continuing operations of almost 1.7 billion euros, which is the equivalent to 1.85 billion US dollars. Their net revenues were 20.567 billion euros or 22.4 billion US, but that is a 16% drop when compared to 2019. The sales also declined down 10% in the US and 21% worldwide for all the vehicles under the FCA name. Unfortunately, the quarter two results are expected to be even worse, as that's primarily when the pandemic hit. FCA does not expect to cancel any new or refresh models, but their North American project timeline has been pushed back by at least three months. Things are not all bad though, as the CEO Mike Manley stated that the company was saving money in every sector of the company, even with low sales. Production is also restarting at some of the FCA facilities as of May 18th, 2020, and as we've been seeing in many companies, there's a very strict protocol to try to keep employees as safe as possible, including masks, safety glasses, daily health checks, thermal imaging camera for temperatures, and more. Also, the FCA and Group PSA merger is expected to be completed by the end of 2020 or in early 2021. Earlier in May, FCA filed a trademark patent for the Dakota nameplate, and of course things like that always cause some stir in the Mopar community. I made a whole video dedicated to looking at speculation about a 2021 Ram Dakota and what that would look like, and it really is expected that Ram will bring a new midsize to the North American market eventually. We're not sure when that is though. Some say that it might share the platform of the 2020 Jeep Gladiator, but that's unlikely since that truck is more of a premium one, used for fun rather than work by many of the customers. It could also be a unibody design. Either way, there has been no Dakota since it got discontinued in 2011, and FCA CEO Mike Manley even admitted, quote, the lack of a mid-sized truck is a clear hole in our portfolio, end quote. And Ram is really trending upwards as they have most of their platforms paid off, and they were the second best-selling truck last year overall, so we'll have to wait and see about the Dakota, but I do feel that it would benefit them. Next up is some information about the upcoming Ram Rebel TRX, which is the Ram truck that will get the Hellcat engine. I've already made a detailed video covering all the details and everything you need to know, so that's going to be in the top right corner if you're interested. This TRX originally debuted at the 2016 Texas State Fair in concept form, and ever since then, Mopar and Ram fans have been following closely along to see when and if the truck would eventually come out. Most pictures shown will be of that concept. It was featured in FCA's upcoming 5-year plan in 2018, slated for a 2022 model year release, and it was confirmed by FCA on June 1st of 2018. Originally, there were plans for an all-new 7.0-litre 426 Hemi called the Rebel TR, and then the Hellcat Rebel TRX, but the 426 was cancelled last year. So the TRX will likely get the 707 horsepower Hellcat engine with a ZF 8-speed automatic transmission, full-time 4x4, selectable driver modes, and launch control. Dealerships are now being informed of their TRX allocation for production starting in September or October, so that's when we'll know exactly which dealerships are going to get a Ram Rebel TRX. And the production should start soon after that, by October of 2020. TFLtrucks.com also leaked some new photos of the TRX, which help us learn a bit more about the truck. There's a console-mounted shifter with a trailer steering system that will allow drivers to back up their trailers using the 360-degree surround view camera system on the 12-inch Uconnect screen, and this will work similarly to Ford's Pro Trailer Backup Assist system. The seats are black and Alcantara with TRX embroidering and red piping, looking very sporty. There also looks to be a Ram air intake for the Hellcat engine to get maximum cooling. Finally, this photo shows a pop-up divider found inside the center console, which apparently shows the true size of the Tyrannosaurus Rex when compared to the TRX. And of course, if you didn't know, the TRX stands for the T-Rex Dinosaur, and under that is the real size of the Velociraptor, just two feet tall, so that taunts Ford's Raptor truck. Ram definitely loves their Easter eggs like this one, and that's an awesome touch. Other new features include a new hood with front scoop and heat extractors, 6.2 supercharged badging, a unique grill design, extra lights in the grill area that's similar to the 2019 Rebel off-the-grid concept, 
and headlights from the 2020 Ram 1500 limited black models. The truck will be wider, of course, with all new fender flares with vents, and 18-inch snowflake style wheels are added with 35-inch off-road tires. Next up is a rare and limited edition Chrysler 300, the SRT Pacer available in just Australia. I already talked about this in my recent 2020 Chrysler 300 SRT video, so this part is just a repeat if you've already seen that video. This is a creation from FCA subsidiary Chrysler Australia, who wanted to celebrate the 50th anniversary of an Australian icon, the 1969 Valiant Pacer. That Pacer was built exclusively for that market, targeting buyers who wanted a fast, rear-wheel drive four-door sedan, and they competed with the Holden Monero and Ford Falcon. The original Pacers had a 3.7-liter straight-six engine, 3-speed manual, Pacer 225 badges, black stripes, and was available in blue, red, or wild yellow. So Chrysler Australia brings back this 300 SRT Pacer to pay homage to the original. Guillaume Drelon, the director of product for Chrysler there, spoke about the car, saying, quote, Marking the 50th anniversary of the much-loved Valiant Pacer, we're excited to celebrate such a milestone with this limited edition car, a revival of the Pacer nameplate for Australian motoring enthusiasts. This is truly a modern take on an Australian classic, and we're excited to bring the Pacer back in this exclusive run of fantastic-looking vehicles. End quote. So the variant is based on the 300 SRT core, limited to just 50 units over 2019 and 2020. There will be three colors available, gloss black, bright white, and ceramic gray. Chrysler did fully wrap one of the vehicles in the original wild yellow body color, but that's not available for purchase. Each side of the Pacer will get a thin black stripe, along with Pacer 392 decals on the front fenders and trunk lid, and that replaces the usual 6.4 Hemi badges. There are also red accent lines on the front splitter area, trunk lid, and a stripe that goes around the edge of the rim. Blacked out SRT core wheels and red Brembo calipers round out the exterior features. The interior gets a Pacer plaque on the center console, telling you which number you have out of 50, and there are Pacer 392 sill covers and floor mats. They also throw in a really nice limited edition framed print that shows both of the Pacers in the wild yellow color in front of the former Chrysler factory in Adelaide. These prints are numbered out of 50 that correspond with your vehicle. And of course, the SRT Pacer gets the 6.4 liter Hemi V8. Pricing comes in at just under 70,000 Australian dollars, which is around 45,000 US. In other 300 news, Chrysler has made an interesting move by adding a new sport package to their Touring L model, and that is the second lowest trim in the lineup, starting at $33,115. This sport package costs $9.95 and adds the SRT front fascia and fog lights, black exterior accents, badging and grill, and 20-inch black noise wheels. This is very similar to the performance appearance package offered on the 300C. So now the lower level 300s can look like an SRT even with the V6 under the hood. That's basically what Dodge did to their lower end Charger models a few years ago, giving them the SRT performance fascias and hood on models like the GT. Chrysler earlier had added a 300 Red S appearance package and three new colors, Frostbite, Canyon Sunset, and Amethyst, so the 300 continues to live on, albeit with much lower sales than in the past. I also wanted to talk a bit about the upcoming Durango Hellcat. Again, I've made a video dedicated to this topic alone, which showed a commercial with what looks like a Durango Hellcat, the sales, feasibility, and more. Currently, there's just a Durango SRT model for $62,995 with the 475 horsepower 6.4 liter V8 engine, so a Hellcat would be a big step above that. Website Mopar Insiders reports that the 2021 Durango is one of the company's top priorities and it could be announced via a live stream in the upcoming weeks, with the dealer ordering expected to start in August of 2020 and production expected to start in October 2020. There have been spy shots of a Durango SRT driving around with the front fascia covered up. It's likely that Dodge would have revealed this at the Detroit Auto Show in June, but of course that's been cancelled. On a Durango Hellcat, I wouldn't expect too many changes. Of course, there will be the Hellcat engine, new front fascia and headlights, a revamped interior, and it could get a different Uconnect system with a bigger screen. The last and least exciting piece of news for most of my viewers today would be the 2020 Dodge Grand Caravan orders have been extended until the end of May due to COVID-19 delays, and of course after that it will no longer be produced. It was originally introduced in 1984, so 2020 will be its 37th and final model year, 
It was supposed to be discontinued way back in 2015, but it's stuck around until now, and it has been the best-selling minivan in North America, as well as the best-selling Dodge vehicle overall. FCA does hope that the Chrysler Pacifica and the Chrysler Voyager can fill the void that the Grand Caravan is leaving behind. So that's the end of this month's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed catching up with the current Mopar world, and even with all the delays due to the pandemic, it does look like things are moving along. Let me know what you guys think about what we talked about today down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.